Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, it's half time report, halfway through the month of January of 2024. How am I going with my pens? Well, my starting lineup, there were six pens. The first pen, Jinho 100 in Meteorite. Okay, this one has got that medium cursive italic nib on it. Beautiful pen, very nice. I'm still getting used to the nib because it's the first time I've had a cursive italic nib. So it's taken me a little bit of practice you know, to get used to using it, but really enjoying the line it puts down. The ink, which was Herban Ted of Wear, again, it's a beautiful, unusual brown color. Now this pen's now empty. I've cleaned it out already. So what I've done, because the idea is all pens that won last year, I thought, well, I've taken one Jin Hao 100 out. Let's fetch another one in. So I've brought in the Jin Hao 100. This is the skeleton version. So this is a transparent body. And then we've got a skeleton there. Now, one of the things I'm just going to show you, I've just taken off the body of both of these. I'm not sure, but I think the converters are different. The one on the skeleton, it looks ever so slightly wider. Could just be an optical illusion. Once they're both empty, I will have a look. But definitely at the top here, that's definitely different between the two. So I don't know if that's a, a new converter t uh, type that they're going to be using, but just a thought interesting to mention. Now I've just got ink all over my hands by putting it on my hand. Let me just pop this back together. This one's nearly out of ink as well, and I'm not sure what to do at the moment. I may put more ink in this. This is extra fine. Actually quite a nice extra fine nib. Not scratchy, which is something I don't know why. I always associate extra fine and being scratchy. But it's quite a nice nib to use. But yeah, just not sure. Do I refill it? Or do I just clean it out and just carry on with the remaining five pens? My second pen, the Hondian N8. This is on the second fill of ink. So I started the month with Colorverse Hubble. It was the last of a sample. When that ran out, well, I changed it for the last of another sample, which is Robert Oster Royal Red. Both red-toned inks. Now, one thing I will note here, there's no staining at all on the section. A number of my other white pens, I do see staining come in here. But I think it's because of the way the nib unit is. I'm not sure. I need to double check this, obviously, when it's empty. I don't think this nib unit screws out. Whenever I take the nib and feed out, I just pull it out. So I'm thinking that there's a very tight fit between the section and the actual nib unit, which will stop the ink from staining. Also, this is a solid white color, whereas my others have got a little bit of translucency, a bit of translucency, translucency, which will also help to hide that. So yeah, a couple of reasons there. If we take this out, here we go. We can see we've got, again, not a lot of ink left in this one. Hopefully there's enough to last me a month, but we'll see. The body does have a little bit of that translucency, so you can see a little bit of the red coming through there. Hopefully that's showing up on the camera. All in all, a nice pen. I love this Flying Feathers colour. Very nice. I like the, like the bit of silver inlay. Very nice. Nice pen to use. One of my nicest nibs that I've got. Absolutely love this pen. Pen number three. This is the Marjan or the Moonman M800. This particular one's in green. Let's turn this around. I'm going to be honest with you, this is one of my favourite pens. Has been since I got it. It was one of the first Chinese pens I've got. I have all four colours in the M800 series. So I've got the green, the blue, the purple and the amber. And I've got a variety of different nibs in them now. So in here, the nib that it came with was a Moonman Fine nib. It was a number six nib. So that's been swapped and I've now got a Goulet Pens Broad nib, which is a Yoho nib. Oh, so nice to write with. Cartridge converter again. This is empty. I'm not going to refill this. I'm still in two minds. I may uh, fill up the amber one. This was my pen for today, so I'm not overly worried at the moment. I've got a few days before I need to reuse it. But yeah, I'm thinking I may look at the nib on the amber one and I may actually fill the amber one. That'll actually come in useful for a video I'm planning for next month. Still a nice pen. I say it's got that Goulet broad nib. Let me just see if I can show you that. There we go. 
And if over here, then we can maybe get in focus, can't we, Gary? There we go. Now, I must apologize. I don't know if it will be caught on the mic. I've tried to isolate the room as much as possible. There's uh, the road out the back is being dug up. So there's heavy machinery going. So hopefully I've been able to isolate the worst of the noise, but you may hear a bit. And unfortunately, I've got to have all the windows shut. So you can see I'm already starting to sweat a bit. But anyway, that's a bit of an aside. That's the Moonman M800. Just dropping in to interrupt your regular programming. Would you like to help support the channel? If so, please consider joining as a member. As a member, you'll get early access to my videos. I normally upload them a couple of days before they go out, and as soon as they're uploaded, they'll be released to members. There'll also be a shout out at the end of the videos, and then as we get the members coming in, we'll actually chat among ourselves and work out what other perks, what other things you'd like me to add in. You know, would you like maybe a monthly live chat just for members? All down to us. So please, if you can, consider joining the channel. A link will be in the description down below. So now I'm jumping to the pens over $100. What I try to do is have three pens under 100, three pens over. So we have a nice spread. Pen number four. This is from Opus 88, and it's the Opus 88 Delaro. Blue, ebonite, like a green plastic or green resin. Very nice. One of my complaints with this, this green resin, as much as I love green, I personally feel it's a bit too dark. So although with this particular moment at the moment, I can see that the ink level is about half full. Sometimes I do struggle with that. So that's one of my issues with it. This is a Japanese eyedropper pen. So you would unscrew the section and then eyedropper from the top. It takes an awful lot of ink. That's why this is only half empty. And I've used this more than virtually every, in fact, I would say I've used this more than any of the other pens this month. We've got a rod going down the middle here and this screws down. If I screw it down, what that's done is that has pushed a little plunger down and it seals off the section from the body. So if you're traveling with it and you're worried about, you know, pressure differential, stuff like that, and dumping all the ink, you could seal it down, which means at the worst you've got what's in the section. But then be careful, make sure you remember to open this back up again. I always leave it open. I'm at home. You know, what's the point in closing it? If I'm going out, then yes, I will, I will close it down, you know, to travel to where I'm going to. But yeah, it's very nice, nice size, nice fit in the hand. Maybe a little bit on the thin side, but not too much. Talking about pens being on the thin side, the next one, this is the Pelican M205. Here we go. Little teeny, teeny, weeny, teeny pen. I mean, certainly not as small as a pocket pen, but getting down towards that. Here's the pen, there's a pen posted. I use this pen posted. I need to use it posted. I found unposted for maybe a sentence. I'll get away with it, but to be honest, just a little bit too small to be useful. Very nice Pelican nib. This is the 205. Yeah, there's my ink from earlier on. So this is the steel version. There we go. Here we've got an ink window. It's very, very dark. So dark it's unusable. If it had been transparent, it would have been very handy because it is a nice size. But I can understand why it's not transparent, because at the end of the day, if that was transparent, it would spoil the overall look of the pen. And the pen looks very nice, very attractive, this blue colour. Just turn this around for you. I'm being very careful here. This is a piston filling pen, so I don't want to end up twisting that and shooting ink all over. So the only issue with this, it's a bit on the small side for me. That's the only downside. I know there's larger versions. 400 series, same size, but with gold nib. 600 series, a bit bigger. 800 series, a bit bigger. 1000 series, bigger still. But the price does go up with them. This, to be honest, I'm going to be honest with you, that's what I could afford. So that's what I've got. But it's still, it's an enjoyable pen to use. The final pen. This is my Pilot Custom 823. I've already had a few people thinking, saying they think that this will be the winning pen. I've got to be honest, I'm not 100% certain. My winning pens at the moment, um, I think it's between these three. 
really enjoy all of them. This is a lot of money, 521 Aussie dollars when I bought it. This is my most expensive pen at the moment. 14 karat gold nib. Here's that pilot number 15 size nib. Got to remember, I've got to move my hand backwards. From what I see in my preview, if everything's back to front. There we go. Broad nib, beautiful pen, vacuum filler. Again, it's got that same shut off valve we saw from the Opus 88. So I won't show you it working, but this one's, I leave it open. To fill the pen, you open it up, draw out this, which draws out this rod here. Then you dip it in the ink and then push this down. It creates a vacuum as we're going down the back here. When it gets to about here, the inside of the barrel expands a bit, which means as the plunger goes by, it releases that uh, vacuum and that sucks ink up because something's got to fill the vacuum. If it's submerged in ink, it will have to be ink. It's a bit fiddly. You can do it a couple of times and get it so you've got quite a good fill. I've got to be honest, I generally only do it once. I usually get about half a barrel full of ink. So I leave it at that. Downside with this pen, obviously won't got as far this month. It's a right pain to clean. Yes, I know you can unscrew the section from the body. Oh, certainly I've been told you can, but I'm not going to risk doing that. I mean, I'd be worried I may, you know, if there's an O-ring, if I lose that, if I crack the material as I'm doing it, I just don't want to risk it. So what I have to do is just keep submerging it in water, filling it, inverting it a few times, emptying it and repeating and repeating and repeating. It takes me usually 10 to 15 minutes to clean this pen out thoroughly because I just keep going and going and going until I've had at least five clean passes of water. You know, maybe I'm a bit oversensitive about it, maybe not. As I say, of the pens at the moment, these three, these are the ones that are my leading contenders for number one. I'm just not sure because, you know, the 823, beautiful pen. I should hold it a bit further down, shouldn't I? Opus 88, beautiful nib, glorious, consistent, writes very well. I've just got a soft spot in my heart for the Marjon M800. You know, I say I've got all four of them, different nibs, easy to swap nibs. This broad nib is very, very nice. So that's where I'm going so far this month with my pens. Remember as well, this month I've got my Spider-Man pen roll that my wife has made for me. So this is where the pens live. She's already made the roll for next month. Slight different change to the pattern as well. What we're trying to do is we're just playing around and trying to get to the, the best way of doing it. And I know a few people have asked, I still keep saying to her, darling, why don't you think about selling them? She's not quite willing to do that yet, but I do keep nagging her. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are your thoughts on my pens? Look, I can get them all in one hand at the moment. Very nice. I said, honestly, it is a nice selection. These were all pens that won last year, and they all deserve to be in this lineup. It's going to be difficult in a couple of weeks when I come to doing, you know, the end of month video, trying to rank them because they're all so nice. They've all got the little quirks. And, and that's what's really nice, isn't it? So please drop a comment down below. How would you decide the winning pen? Please hit the thumbs up button. Every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.